1988, what an incredible year in RPGs, and a defining year in video games. We saw failures like the Power Pad, and classics like Sega's OutRun. 88 arguably produced more classic RPG series and more great role playing games than any other year previously reviewed to date. I think 88 was one of the most fascinating years in RPG history, and I hope you guys enjoy this video as well. In 88, legendary developer Enix released Dragon Quest 3, the third installment in one of RPG's greatest series. Dragon Quest 3 is noted for greatly expanding upon the gameplay of the original Dragon Quest and Dragon Quest 2. Both of those games were already considered exceptional at their time. This game uses basic role playing video game conventions such as leveling up by gaining experience points and equipping items. But Dragon Quest is most notable for selling an incredible 1 million copies in the first day in Japan, something that was basically unheard of in general, never mind us in the first day, and selling nearly 4 million copies in total. Apparently the problem was so bad in Japan that a few hundred kids were actually arrested for skipping school to play so much. This game, more than the first two, really helped establish this series as one of the preeminent series in RPGs. It really helped to establish the RPG genre even more so than, than before as not just a niche genre, but something that anybody could play or something that anyone was playing at the time. My North American viewers might know this game as Dragon Warrior 3 for the NES. This game was also released many many times, including a version for the Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, and the Game Boy Color. This goes to show you that great games will always be remade throughout history. In 88, we saw the release of Ultima 5, Warriors of Destiny, the latest released in the Legendary series. Ultima 5 was the first in the series, and one of the first games in general, to feature a time of day change, where nighttime would have a different effect on the in-game world something that we see as commonplace today. Ultima 5 simply took the franchise one step further, with a more detailed story, a larger map, larger towns, and a greater array of conversation choices, which simply made a more fulfilling world, something we saw a lot of during this year. Look at Dragon Quest 3, look at Final Fantasy 2, and then look at Ultima 5. They all expanded upon what was already done to make a more complete game. At the time of release, both critics and gamers alike praised this game as being one of the best RPGs in the series, and I think many people still hold that as the same. Ultima 5 truly was a masterpiece and definitely holds a significant place not only in the Ultima series, but in RPG history. Like prior Ultima entries, this did see a, a port to the NES, but the PC is still considered the best version. Squaresoft released the sequel to its widely popular Final Fantasy game in 1988 for the Nintendo Famicom, helping cement, this, helping cement this series as one of the greatest RPG series and one of the greatest gaming series in general, with the introduction of Final Fantasy II. Much like its predecessor in Dragon Quest III, the game was a commercial hit and sold over a million copies in Japan alone. Like many other games in the series, this game has had numerous releases, helping it to stay culturally relevant in Japan and America. Final Fantasy fans should note that Final Fantasy II introduced the character Sid, who is one of the only characters to be represented across many games throughout the series. Another, note another noteworthy inclusion in this game was the introduction of the Chocobo. The Chocobo, in my opinion, is one of the most well-known fictional species in RPGs and in video gaming in general. Final Fantasy II was also incredibly important for setting the precedent in the series that there wouldn't be direct sequels, rather it would have completely new stories with loosely tying themes and a loosely tying world. I think that was something that kept this series alive more than any other series, because could you possibly have 15 sequels? No, but you could have 15 separate stories all within a general universe, and that's something that's amazing. 88 saw the introduction of yet another classic franchise in the YS series. Combat in the YS game is rather different than any other RPG at the time, which either had turn-based battles or a manually activated weapon. YS instead features a battle system where fighters automatically attack when walking into their enemies off-center. When one fighter crashes into an enemy, damage could be sustained 
on both sides if both combatants are facing each other. And that does sound a little bit ham-fisted, but I actually think it's a pretty cool idea and I think it came together pretty well, as evidenced by the series' popularity. Another pretty cool thing about this series was the furthering, I guess if you want to say that, of the rechargeable health meter. Something that I've stated in the past, we saw from the original Dragon Slayer game, and something that has truly, truly um, revolutionized the way we played RPGs. Like I said before, can you picture playing a modern RPG like Fallout, Skyrim, Oblivion, um, The Witcher 3, any game where you don't have a rechargeable health mechanism, it seems like it would be impossible in a modern western RPG, and this is one of the games that helped popularize that so important feature. RPG lovers of the late 80s will be very familiar with SSI's The Gold Box series, and here we saw the beginning of that with Pools of Radiance, one of the most iconic games in history. The best way to describe the Gold Box series was basically taking Dungeons and & Dragons and putting it onto a computer. I saw a couple videos where people at this time period were really blown away that they were able to put all this stuff into one game, and it was an incredible feat at the time. While most gamers and critics did praise this game, some people did say that this game was too similar to other RPGs, and I can definitely get where they're coming from. At this time, and even today, we see many RPGs exhibiting the same features, and that kind of gets boring for some gamers, and I think that's part of the reason that RPGs did decline a little bit later in the period. One pretty cool feature of Pool of Radiance was the ability to export characters between games in the series. Many people see the Gold Box series as one of the few highlights in this period for Western RPGs. This game was able to sell a pretty impressive 264,000 copies in the West, something that most of the series just weren't doing at this time. RPGs were in a down point in this period. Infocom and Westwood produced what I think might be the coolest RPG of the series in Battletech, the Crescent Hawks Inception. What a cool game, what a cool concept. Everybody loves giant mechs fighting each other. And this game was one of the first, or not one of the first, but one of the first mainstream tactical RPGs. Something that really helped put the genre, or the sub-genre, even into a brighter spot, and helped pave the way for games like Final Fantasy Tactics, Vanguard Bandits, and even games like Disgaea. And while this game didn't reach nearly the same popularity as some of the other games listed this year, this game was pretty popular, and it's pretty important for being one of the first games to include a statue. Um, nowadays you see plenty of RPGs coming, coming out with statues and figurines and stuff in their special editions. Some critics of the game did complain about this game being a little bit too easy, and I can understand that. But in a way, that can also be a good thing, as it can definitely help get newer intermediate players into the series. When The Wasteland launched, it was an incredibly unique concept. This was an RPG that took us out of the fantastical worlds of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest and brought us into a darker, more cryptic place. A post-apocalyptic environment. Although I'm sure this wasn't the first game, it definitely helped inspire future generations of RPGs, most notably the Fallout series. But that's it guys, I definitely think games like this and others helped create, helped create 1988 as one of the most important RPG years in history.